Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the panel. John Travolta, dancing his way down 86th Street in Bensonhurst as the subway rolled over his head and dancing in 2001 Space Odyssey, a venue that would not be permitted today. The Jets and the Sharks and Tony and Maria dancing where Lincoln Square is today. Sinatra and Gene Kelly dancing through the city while on shore leave. Tom Hanks dancing in big on a piano in the middle of Midtown Manhattan. Folks dancing on top of bars in Coyote Ugly dancing in the Lower East Side in Rent, dancing in Central Park in Hair, jazz, all that jazz, chorus line, dancing by the World Trade Center in Wiz, dreams of kids in fame. These are iconic images of New York City, our city. I'm talking about dance. I'm talking about the universal language. I'm talking about the human need to dance. You know, just as dancing is illegal, it's illegal to clap here. We're going to have to do the jazz hands. <laughs> That's right. In New York City, it's illegal to dance. Kind of. All thanks to something called the Cabaret Law. So, you know, it was enacted in 1926, and, you know, they're trying to find new ways to kind of control, like, black populations. And cabaret law, let's stop them from dancing and enjoying themselves. That's Frankie. She's a co-founder of Dis Woman, a New York DJ collective and booking agency focused on women artists. Earlier this year, she started the Dance Liberation Network, a group pushing to change the almost century-old cabaret law. The cabaret law was first enacted by Mayor Jimmy Walker, ostensibly as a way to limit illegal alcohol consumption during Prohibition. But many New Yorkers believe the law was specifically designed to target interracial mingling in jazz clubs. Without a license, it was illegal to host dancing, singing, musical entertainment, and other forms of amusement. And licenses were hard to come by. Even now, only about 100 of the more than 12,000 bars and clubs in New York City hold a cabaret license, which means many popular establishments are technically in violation of the law. In the decades after Mayor Walker was forced to resign amid allegations of widespread corruption, the law eventually faded into obscurity and was rarely enforced. By the early 90s, the New York club scene was thriving. But the law remained on the books, and it was just a matter of time before an opportunistic mayor began using it as a pretense to shut down pesky neighborhood nightclubs. I'll place a much greater emphasis on stricter enforcement of the law to reverse the growing trend of ever-increasing tolerance for law lawless behavior. Task forces began raiding and fining establishments for violating the no dancing law. Many owners couldn't afford the heavy cost and eventually went out of business. Others went underground, partying in secret and changing the music when they got word that a raid was coming. After Giuliani, the Bloomberg administration flip-flopped on the law. Broadway-style dancing. That's what I thought. No wonder this is taking forever. Sometimes enforcing it and other times working to repeal it. But ultimately, the raids continued. Clubs got fined or shut down, and the repeal never got a hearing in City Hall. But now, under de Blasio's more progressive administration, the Dance Liberation Network sees an opportunity. It definitely was spurred on by uh, our new highly conservative government, feeling very united in terms of like, the fact that we want to like change something. So like with our help and um, a couple of other groups that we work with, we were able to sort of raise enough sort of attention to it where, you know, bill droppers were listening yeah. again. Some of their efforts so far have included organizing a DJ set live streamed by the music platform Boiler Room, participating in the 11th annual New York City Dance Parade, and starting a change.org petition that's collected close to 4,000 signatures. In this June, they helped arrange a hearing to bring the issue back to City Hall, the first step in a potentially lengthy repeal process. Good afternoon. My name is Rafael Espinal, and I'm the chair of the Consumer Affairs Committee. Today, the committee will be holding an oversight hearing titled Enforcement of New York City's Cabaret Law. 
the bill that I have right now is pretty much a, a clearly going to be a full repeal of the cabaret law. So that means all of the language that's been in place for you know almost 100 years now will be removed, completely removed off our books. If the city does want to repeal the archaic law, now seems like a good time. Japan eased its restrictive dancing laws in 2015, and Sweden followed suit a year later. While de Blasio has not actively enforced the no dancing law, there's no telling what future administrations will look like. As long as the law is on the books, more clubs risk getting shut down. That it's taken so long to get rid of a law that's rooted in racism isn't an encouraging sign in a country facing renewed challenges under Trump. But there's finally some cause for optimism. Councilmember Espinal has now officially introduced the repeal, and he expects conversations to continue throughout the summer, with a vote coming as early as this fall. What exactly is standing in the way of it happening? I mean, that's really the question, isn't it? <laughs> um, I mean, it's hard for me to answer that because I'm like, I literally don't know. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm like, um, hmm, I don't know. Maybe uh, racism. Um, every kind of thing I think of is just so depressing and like absurd that I'm like, why? Yeah. It's done, yeah. You know, we were able to, you know, to tout the fact that there's a lot of great bands and musicians that came out of New York City's nightlife. TV on the radio, The Strokes, The National, The Yeah Yeah Yeahs, all the hip hop artists, the Jay-Z's, the Biggie Smalls, you know, they all came out because of the, at, that New York nightlife culture. I think it's important that we, that we continue supporting that. You know, if, if we lose that, then we pretty much lose the luster and like what makes New York City shine.